Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 256. I'm your host, Norman Sanso. Joining me today is Daniel Anthony. Hello, Norman. Good to be back. Hey there, Daniel. How are you? I've seen better weeks, but it's okay. I'm alive. Alrighty then, alrighty then. So, well, this week, it's just the both of us. And you know what? Like the good old days. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Let's just hop into it. So, uh, you know the Emmys, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Apparently, the My Little Pony, The Legend of Everfree movie, or that TV movie, uh, they got nominated for a Daytime Emmy. So, yay, that's cool. And they were uh, nominated for Best Original Song. So, that song is entitled um, The Legend of Everfree. Um, this is the title intro song for said movie, and it's pretty good. Yep, Daniel Ingram's making a hell of a good comeback in the series with a lot of better songs, a lot of good songs right now. And uh, guess what? He's going to be making an appearance at Bronicon this year. Yeah, his first, right? No, I think he's been there before, but it's been a while since he has been at Bronicon. Mm, all right, all right. So it's good to see him back there, you know, in touch with the fans again. That's always cool. That's always cool. And another notable song on the list is Sisina Sawa uh, from Disney's The Lion Guard. It's not a bad song. I've heard it, and it's pretty good. As for the rest of the songs on the list, I didn't get a chance to do my research on them. I'm pretty sure they're all they're all catchy, and that's what makes us love them. Because you know, uh, every time people ask about MLP music, nothing beats winter wrap up. You know, just play, just sing one line from anywhere in the song, and everyone knows what song it is. True, and that's also the sad part because earlier songs are better than the new one. Sigh. I would say that um, some of them have been. Some of them have got a new lease of life, like in a Pinkie Pie's Party playlist, that album. Uh, Pony Pokey finally came out as a standalone song, and it was made really, really well. True, but season one. <laughs> it is a season one song, but given a fresh breath of life that even as we're going through season six, you can bring back a season one song and it has the full... Uh, yeah, you, you can say that, yes, it's a season, even though it's a season one song, it has... It is more catchy and more memorable. But then again, Pony Pokey isn't that much of an original thing. It's a play on a folk, play on a common song that we all sang when we were kids. Really? I don't remember singing something like that. You don't know the Hokey Pokey? Yeah, but the Pony version of it was not like... No, great. the Pony version is its own. I mean, it's, it's a parody. Yeah. True, but I, I don't remember that kind of song. Like, the Pony Pokey one was much more entertaining. Uh, but, but, this is, but that's besides the point. And you did mention convention, right? So, oh, yes. then... How's yours going? You're talking about the Friendship Express that is uh, from last year. And uh, for those of you who haven't got the memo, because we found out that a lot of people still have not gotten the most recent memo from the Friendship Express team, there will not be a Friendship Express this year. Really now? And how, how come? Like, how did they not know? I don't know how they don't know. I mean, we put, we put a letter up on an EQD. It's on our website at thefriendshipexpress.org. And it's not because we don't want to do it. It's not because, uh, you know, we're lazy or anything. It's just that Charlie and I and uh, the rest of the team behind the Friendship Express, which Norman is also partly involved in, we have uh, thought about how we did it in 2015 where we had quite an interesting event going on. And we knew that in 2015, we didn't charge even for entrance. It was free to enter. And that was part of what... um kind of uh, caused it to be a big drainage of funds. We didn't earn much. We didn't earn anything. It was, a, it was, you know, basically a lot of expense. The way we put it is that we want to bring people together and seeing the smile on people's face and, the, you know, the memories that are made and also the experience we gain. That is the priceless uh, return on investment we get. And we had that in mind and we did 2016's Friendship Express. And Charlie, a big part of what Charlie wants to do is charity. He loves uh, doing something for the community, and that's what we did. We raised over two thousand ringgit for charity, if I'm not mistaken, in 2016. Yeah, but I remember that happening. Yes, and that was an achievement for Charlie, and that got to his goal. And you know, since then we thought we've done what we wanted to do, and uh, we're not quitting because we can't. We're not quitting because we don't want to. We're quitting because we're done. We 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 fulfilled what we set out to do, and. You know, somebody else wants to continue. Every, anyone's more than welcome to pick up the torch and, uh, you know, continue the Friendship Express or another Malaysian pony convention. In fact, I've seen some conversation going on about it within the local community, and I'm very excited about that. Ah, cool. That'll be awesome to see if it goes up. Like, 
another con by another group of people, yeah, they'll they'll be awesome to see. But besides uh, Friendship Express, there's the other one, of course, right? Of course, yes, and uh, that's also partly why I'm I ha- moved on from the Friendship Express is because I'm doing Project C Pony Con now, and uh, if you haven't heard of it, 19 to 20 August 2017 in Bangkok, Thailand. It's going to be the first convention in Asia, the first pony convention in Asia with a VA from the show attending in person. Because no other pony convention in this part of the world has ever, not this, not just this part of the world, this entire continent, the biggest continent in the world, has never had a pony convention with a VA in presence. So we're going to be the first to break that new ground and it's going to be in Bangkok. And it's going to be Andrew Lippmann, who's the voice of Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. Ah, that's going to be awesome, awesome. Like, uh, having a VA down does have some good merits to it, so yay. We wanted to go and uh, break past the usual... I mean, Not to say break past, we looked at all the 13 pony conventions that have happened, well, sorry, the 12 pony conventions that have happened up to today in Southeast Asia alone, starting from the Philippines Pony Con in Manila, all the way up to the Friendship Express uh, 2016, which was the last pony convention that was held in this part of the world. And uh, in less than two weeks from now, it will be the Thai Pony Convention, which is going to be on 8th of April. And that would be the 13th Pony Convention and the last Pony Convention in Southeast Asia before Project C Pony Con. Mm. We looked at them and they have a lot of things in common. And the idea of Project C Pony Con is to bring it all together and, for the lack of a better word, level up. That would be cool. That would be cool. So Thai Pony Con does their thing. And then the next one up is you guys. And, uh, you know, I, I maintain my stance about Thai Pony Con. We don't hate each other. We don't, we're not competitors or anything. The, the reason, you know, some people ask, why are there two pony conventions in Bangkok? You know, it sometimes comes across and rubs off on people that we don't get along. That's not true. We actually are good friends with each other. But, um, Thai Pony Con reaches out to a completely different audience. Thai Pony Con is a convention that was designed for the family and the younger audience in mind. And talk, about uh, preteens and uh, kids who are almost like, you know, 6 to 12 years old going running around. There's going to be a lot of activities catered towards them, singing competitions and, um, you know, a lot of activities you would love to see at a really fun and happening party. It's really youthful, so there's no age limit on the convention. You know, you can go there and have fun as well. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be there as well. Uh, Project C PonyCon is an emulation of what most brony conventions are like, where we're going to involve things that will entertain older members of this fandom just like Norman and I and many other people who are out there. People who want to meet and greet with a VA, people who want to host panels, perform, watch music. And basically, one of the biggest missions we have is to bring the convention scene of the US and and Europe, the Western side, and give Asia a taste of it. Yep, yep. I personally have been to the European side of things and you have been on the American side of things and mm-hmm. it can get rather wild. Um, I won't say to the point where we can't share this on radio and whatnot, but it's just that um, some of the perks of having the higher tiers um, for the conventions are meet and greet at a bar and whatnot, so alcohol is involved. And... Alcohol definitely involved in many, many conventions overseas. And that was one of the big challenges that hit us. It's like, you know, we're, this is a cu- country, Bangkok, Malaysia, Singapore. We're in countries where, you know, heavy drinking and alcohol is not part of the subculture that intersects with the bronies. I mean, there is some intersect. There are some bronies who are heavy drinkers and, uh, you know, among people who like to go and have that level of fun. But we had to we had to understand that we weren't catering to the same crowd. We were catering to people who don't necessarily involve themselves in this. I mean, I can go and have a good time at a bar for a while, but I don't do that on a very often basis. It's just something I do once in a while. With friends, I don't do it alone. So we had to formulate and kind of calculate how to have fun without alcohol. <laughs> well, you can always have fun without alcohol. You can always do it, but you know, you know and in, that's easy for an individual to say, but for an event, it's a whole different story. I uh, can't say much about that. Um, I'm no drinker, so I really don't... No, I really can't say much about that one. But still, uh, when it comes to partying, it depends. Like, be safe, be prepared, and all that good stuff. Like, food is also another part, too. And talking about food, uh, what do you guys have in terms of food in the con? Uh, the convention is not going to deal in food because, you know, it's not a food con. It's not the... 
one of those kind of cons. It's um, we basically have placed the convention in a part of town where it's not difficult to get food. Ah. Head downstairs, there's a Seven Eleven prepackaged food, and we strongly encourage that you, you know, because um, one of the things that we focused on so much in Project City PonyCon is the affordability of the convention to make sure people can afford it. And if you're also traveling on a budget, we suggest pre-purchase your food perhaps a day before, like on Friday night, if you're flying in on Friday. Take a trip to the supermarket. There's a supermarket in the Rama 9 complex, which is just a short walk from the convention center, about 10-15 minute walk. Go get yourself some food, some something to pack along and eat, or plenty of 7-Elevens in town. There's even a family mart in town. Uh, go get something that you can pack and bring along. Because, you know, the idea of being at a convention, a lot of people have asked, hey, are there allocated time slots for food? Are there allocated time slots for prayer breaks? And we say, no, we're not going to allocate time slots for this because, you know, we don't want the energy to die just because some people need to eat, some people need to go. I mean, you know, we have nothing against Muslims who need to pray or people who want to eat. But, you know, we're not going to compromise or bring an entire convention to a halt just for certain things. We know that some people don't want that to happen. We're not, that's not what we're looking for. Instead, you know, we allocate uh, we don't allocate even. We say it's up to you. The convention schedule is free and easy to the point. We're not, you're not forced to be a part of it. Even though, you know, I mean, you, you do pay a ticket. You feel obliged, but you're not forced to be a part of it. True. I mean, you can always take your food breaks during one of the boring panels, like one of those MPS show panels. Oh, very boring. You can have a uh, food time there or prayers there. We're currently dealing with uh, the venue and trying to figure out about food in the venue, whether it's allowed to bring in and where you can eat within the venue. If not, the the building, actually a lot of people don't really know this, and I think I better make it known right now, the convention is on the seventh floor oh. of this building. Yeah, it's not on the ground floor, but there is a 7-Eleven on the ground floor, there's a cafe on the ground floor, you can go there and enjoy a meal, a coffee, or something like that. So we're looking at the how how well food goes in this convention center, and if it's good, you know, you're encouraged to come in and, you know, even perhaps uh, have a snack during a panel just don't make a mess. Uh, well, if you want to bring in Cheetos or Twisties, that's fine. Don't bring in noodles or <laughs> something well, crazy. The thing is, like, uh, I'm for one for eating, but it's rather impolite to eat while attending a panel because uh, I do remember Silver Quill once told me this, that he propped up his camera for him to record and unbeknownst to him, there was this kid besides him who was eating chips. So, to oh, video boy. totally ruined, cannot be used, and oh. yeah, no, no video. Like it was recorded with the camera from 1960. Yeah, I like chips munching. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, I, I don't recommend doing that because I mean, be might... considerate. It's the it's the bottom line of things. If somebody tells you not to, just don't. We, we want to make the convention experience fun and accessible for all, and also be able to ha allow people to use their time in a very optimized manner as well. Because uh, you know, the convention, think about it, 12 hours a day you have a con, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., and you have two days, there's 24 very short hours. If you, don't, if you have trouble visualizing it, just uh, set your phone uh, right now, a timer for 24 hours. You'll be surprised how soon it rings. You, you realize that 24 hours is really short, and this weekend is going to blow past you so fast. We want to just make the best of that time. Yep, true, that, true, that. Besides the time allocation and whatnot, what, what else do you have planned? The planning is going to be quite interesting because we're going to open panel applications uh, very, very soon. In fact, by the time this episode is up, the panel application should be open. And uh, you can head on over to panels.cponycon.com or harmony6.cponycon.com to apply for a panel. And uh, we also will be opening musicians' applications. So if you want to perform during the convention, yes, go, um, go on over to our website, cponycon.com. You'll see a button there to apply to be a musician at one of our two concerts. So there's going to be music. There's definitely going to be, a, be music. It's a huge part of the brony scene. We cannot excuse or deny that music is there. And um, because of that, we're going to have performers. There are performers already being lined up as we speak. And two weeks ago, we announced that we announced our first community guest, who is Niels, who will be performing at the convention. And there are more to come. All right, can't wait to hear some of them. In fact, Niels hasn't performed in the Pony Convention for a while now, so it's going to be great to see him perform again. Oh yeah, yeah, and I know that he is a avid Street Fighter Five player. So who knows? Maybe we can have something going on with that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Street Fighter Five. Uh, I don't know what else he plays right now, to be honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, last I saw, he was doing what was he was doing before? He did Street MGS Five for the longest time. Yeah, but then, he uh, finished that one, so it's yeah, like he finished that one, but he still continued running around hunting sheep and sending them up into the <laughs> things. Yeah, and uh, there were what else was there? He played. That's not a word. Kind of games, I can't remember. Yeah, but uh, well, that's, that's besides the point. That's besides the point. Um, yeah. If someone were to set up a, a gaming thing, to well, maybe maybe up on the stage, Mills versus whoever, like maybe <laughs> me. Be I, fun. I, I'll play. Maybe with fighting him. is magic. Maybe fighting is magic. Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe that. Maybe that. Hasbro's gonna arrest me now. <laughs> no. Uh, talking about things like spoilery things, oh, season man. seven. <laughs> Se- season seven, episode three and episode four. Um, title reveal. So much just revealed. Um, I know how you feel about these spoilers, then, so I'm not going to read the synopsis. If people are interested, they should go to the show notes and click them and read them. So I'm just going to reveal the title for um, Season 7, Episode 3 and 4. <laughs> I'm kidding, go ahead. So um, Episode 3 title is going to be A Flurry of Emotions. So use your imagination with that one. And episode four, rock solid friendship. So, these two titles are rather interesting. I like where this is going, and I do want to see how they handle stories. I'm already beginning to see what's going to happen. That's the problem. That's the problem with me and synopsis because I I love to connect the dots. I already can tell what these episodes are most likely going to be about. Wait, have, are you and reading the synopsis? No, I'm not. I'm just looking at the title and I already can guess pretty much what the episode's going to be about. The problem is, I hope I'm wrong. Because if I'm right, I'm going to be disappointed. Well, you don't like synopsis, but when you connect the dots, you're setting yourself up. You're having expectations. But if you read the yeah, synopsis... And that's the problem. Yeah, but when you read no, no, the... No, that's, that's why I'm not reading the synopsis because I don't want to know anything about the episode before I watch it. Yeah, the problem true. is the title alone is already giving, clue, giving me clues. Yeah, true, but you know what, like, having some expectation will be fine, eh. But you know what, uh, talking about expectations and whatnot, panels, you mentioned panels, and oh, I yes. do, and I, I do have some ideas for panels, so how does one do this? Like, I want to apply for a panel, so how do I do it? We're gonna have a form that is gonna be put up. And uh, I would like to talk a bit about our panel system, that it's going to be something rather different from what you've seen in other cons. Because if anyone has been to a Western Pony convention, you know that a panel isn't strictly what a usual panel is in a typical formal conference or convention. A typical conference convention has five people sitting talking about one topic, and they're usually brought together. A lot of times, these people have never met each other prior to the panel. But in a in a pony convention, panels are really, really creatively used for all sorts of things. They are used for, you know, premiering uh, new episodes of PMVs, just like how the Collaboratory did it at BronyCon. It is used for, um, you know, performing, like how there was an open mic as well at BronyCon. They're even used for other fandoms to meet up at pony conventions like at TrotCon with like the Cantina Con and... Uh, what do you call it, the Steven Universe meetup and things like that. It was, it's quite creative how people use a simple panel and turn it into a very vibrant activity. And so what we want to do is we want to capture this same spirit by um, calling our panel system Harmony 6. Uh, you may have heard Harmony 6 before from Friendship Express, but this is a complete redesign of what Harmony 6 is. Harmony 6 is stands for the six categories of which an activity or a panel can fall in. So it's going to be panels and activity applications. Any activity or a panel can fall between, within at least one, if not more, of these six categories being music, literature, media, people, design, and technology. So music is music, nothing more to it. Literature being uh, fan fiction, uh, composition, media being animation and videos, and perhaps even podcasts. People, communities, conventions, meetups, design would be art, and uh, of course websites and things like that. And technology is also what it says on the tin. So you can easily have pa- panels that have more than one category, like uh, let's see, uh, mu- PMV animation is music and media. Uh, comics, literature and media, and design even. And it has so many things that um, we want to be able to take this, take 
all the panels and all the activities that want to come forward, organize them in the six categories and help people to say, okay, I'm here for the music stuff. What can I attend that has to do with music? And they instantly can see what panels deal with music, what activities deal with music and go straight for that. Cool, cool. So this is new thing coming out by River Horse, the My Little Pony Tales of Equestria tabletop game. So where does that go in terms of the Harmony 6 idea? I would say that is actually within... Uh, it, was, it will go with people because gaming is a social thing and a tabletop is a social thing. And because, you know, a lot of these... It's a tabletop game. I would say because it involves some degree of lore, you can put it under literature as well. Hmm. Cool. And it has a book, so literature. Yay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, you see, that's why uh, when, you, when you mentioned uh, this new one, is it Pony Finder? No, it's uh, Tales of Equestria by River Horse. Yeah. All right. Since you mentioned Tales of Equestria, I mean, when if let's just say someone wanted to do a panel about, hey, uh, how do you go about playing it, or tips and tricks and things like that, or special hacks for the game, <laughs> that would <laughs> that would come under something that would probably require presentation or even interactive uh, elements. And this is why we're trying to be able to allocate the right space for the right activity. If you have a panel that's going to be dealing a lot with um, drawing, let's just say you're doing a design panel, how to properly draw ponies' eyes. I mean, every artist has been through the problem. You draw one eye, it looks amazing, gorgeous and sexy. You draw the other eye, it looks like complete garbage. Well, you always do the copy-paste thing. (laughs) Copy-paste, invert, copy-paste, flip. (laughs) But that doesn't exist on paper. So (laughs) I forgot. So, <laughs> how do you say? Maybe someone can come up with a panel that does something like that, an activity. But if I would, let's just say I go to that activity and I'm facing the same problem. I want to practice. I would be, we are aiming to provide the best possible space. Perhaps a space with tables and chairs. So, you know, there's a table for you to start drawing as you learn. And if you're going for something that's um, more interactive, a smaller space rather than a big hall will be better because you can get into interaction with your peers and the people that are involved in that activity. So the more we know about it, the better we can accommodate such an activity or event. That's true. I, I, I see what you're meaning. Like, um, when I went, there was this thing where um, Heather Breckel was introducing or teaching us all about, or talking about her colorings and stuff and the way she did it and whatnot. And it was huge. Like, it was done in the main stage. She was, oh, she was up on stage, she was talking, and you know what? That was all fun and good, but at the same time, it was very impersonal. It was very, like, how do I put this? Um, it was very... It was one way. Yeah. Right? It has that... But then again, these kind of panels need the big stage because, hey, you're getting the, the star of the show to be there and speak, so we're not going to put an activity... Like, a good example is we're not going to put an activity like this in a small panel hall. It's not going to make sense. Well, understandable, but at the same time, too, wouldn't it be much more entertaining and fun to have, well, this kind of person... Like, okay, for example, if if you guys had Heather Breckel on and you guys put her in a room probably fitting 30 people and, yeah, everybody could just... Um, have their tablet on standby and do the same thing at the same time and she talks about stuff and, you know, gives tips and tricks. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, I think Everfree Northwest is going into some activities along this line. I think it's Everfree Northwest. Please don't cite me on this. Let me just do a bit of research. Uh, but still, but still, besides that idea, um, I'm, I'm sure that, well, <laughs> uh, people who do audio plays or audio dramas would probably have a better time ha- having a bigger stage and whatnot. I, I don't know because yep. I'm not... Ah, yes, it was, it was Everfree Northwest. They have actually done a bit of a segmented, uh, how do you say, ticketing. So now there are actually going to be some cases where there are uh, events that require an additional ticket on top of your convention ticket to attend. And of course, um, you... You're most likely going to get what you pay for in terms of a much more interactive or perhaps much more intimate experience with perhaps a VIP. Hmm, true, 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 true. And yeah, for, for the cost, I do understand. I do understand. But besides the point, like I mentioned before, having um, a guest there with a specific niche um, requires certain rooms. Like, Of course, uh, that's <laughs> what we're aiming to do. We're trying to get the best space possible for the activity. True, true. And... 
if I'm not mistaken, like, I'm going there too. So, you know what? I'm not going to go there empty-handed. The last time I went there empty-handed, I was rather disappointed. And that was Buck. Where? Buck? Yeah. Okay. So, the one I went to, which was the Friendship Express twice, I had a panel on board. And let's just say the first panel was confusing. (laughs) Well, it's always the first time. True. Uh, like, the first time is always the confusing and awkward one where yeah, you got I mean, no idea. At least, at least you got a second shot. I mean, maybe you went for BronyCon. We had one shot. <laughs> yeah. Well, you went to the other one and you learned your I lesson. Yeah. No, no. I had, I had a successful panel at TrotCon as well. Yeah. I had another panel at TrotCon that didn't go as well, but. <laughs> well, I, I had two panels at TrotCon, yeah. So the, I did the same thing there. So it was, but then again, at BronyCon, really, <laughs> one shot. <laughs> Yeah, but still, but still. And, well, if I'm going to the Project Sea Pony Con, I'm going to have another panel there, so... I don't like how you're saying if. It's 300 ringgit on Malaysia Airlines return right now, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> uh, true that, true that. So we... I don't endorse Malaysia Airlines, but dude... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going, I'm going. So, but... I- I'm going... <laughs> I can't say if anymore, dang. I need to be careful <laughs> with my words. But anyway, I'm going, and I want to know, like... I'm not going. I'm not going to go there empty-handed. I want to have a panel. So, registrations are open, right? I thought for a second you were going to say you want to give do some giveaways. <laughs> not yet. I got no idea. Well, you said empty-handed. So I thought, oh, he's bringing stuff. I mean, nah, um, panel applications are not open yet, but they they could be by the time this episode is up, depending on how fast we can get them out. We're almost done. The finishing touches are being put on. We're most likely going to launch it. We already promised it will be launched within March. Awesome, and you know what? I want to go there. I want to make a panel about something. Like, I don't know. It's going to be something because the first panel I had was about the show and I thought it was derp. The second oh panel I had... God, I have a brilliant idea, man. Oh, what was it? What was it? Let's have a panel about how to do a panel. Ooh, yo, that would be amazing. Like, I don't know how to do a panel and I could go to a panel and learn how to do a panel. Awesome. Yeah. That's very meta. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, but in all honesty, um, second panel I had about comics, so the third panel, I don't know. Um, I want to do something MBS. You know how this show is very old. It has a lot Five of... Five years old. True. Um, and you know what? I had a lot of friends from all over the place. You know what? I'll... I'll keep that in mind. I'll see what I can do. Once the panel registration's up, I'll be sure to, you know what, um, apply and stuff. And since I know that Jewel Eater Dragon is joining me, and so is Twilight Genesis, I should do something with them too. Hmm. Mm. It makes a lot of sense. Hmm. It does. Hmm. If you guys don't know who they are, you should listen to our previous episode to find out what they do. <laughs> uh-huh. But anywho, that's besides the point. Um. Then, what else could people expect? Because... Um, we talk about the panel applications, the spacing, the food. Um, you did mention Andrea coming down. So oh, yes. let's talk about her. If she's coming down, uh, what's the situation going to be for you besides the whole panic and mayhem? It's also a big a new experience for me. And um, we can't talk about much about it because, you know, for her own security. But the thing is, we're definitely going to be all set. It's going to be her first trip to Asia. So we want to make it an unforgettable one. All right, all right. Awesome, awesome. And I do hope you guys have a good liaisons for her because that what makes the difference in terms of a memorable moment. Because I do remember that Chef Sandy and uh, Apple Cider from the Bronyville podcast were liaisons for certain VAs. I, no, no, not VAs. They were liaisons for the guests? show people. Uh, oh, show people. Jim Miller and who else? Uh, I forgot. Like Big Jim Miller and this other guy. Uh, the other guy, director. Larson. No, not Larson. Woody Wooten? Yeah, Woody. Mm-hmm. And... Wow, the stories that they told Cider and Sandy were awesome and could not be shared. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I wish I was in there. But still, hearing things like that, like I do hope that you guys get a good liaison who knows the place, who knows the food, and yeah, like could be a guide. 
Oh yes, we have, we we are looking at that. In fact, we've got we've got we've got some liaisons already lined up for the project for the project. In fact, during Thai PonyCon is going to be quite a, a session where I'm going in an, in about two weeks time from now. I will be at Thai PonyCon giving a a presentation about Project C PonyCon as well as some things that you can expect and also the latest updates. Like, uh, we haven't been releasing episodes of the Path recently because we've been very taken up, very busy with the convention operations, especially in the month of March because, you know. In February, we crossed the six-month mark. We are now approximately four and a half months away from the con. Yeah, time flies. Four months. Woof. That's that's rough. Yeah. And time woof. flies. I I need to save up money, man. Like woof. Yeah, especially with the way the Thai bot is doing. They're doing so well. I know. Oh, maybe I need to fly a Equestria. I hope they get good deals. Equestrian Airlines flies three times weekly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but 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 but. Um, what about toys? Like, do you guys, are you guys gonna sell merch and whatnot? Like, I do know that people like the merch. Yeah, the, we, we ourselves may not be selling merch, but our vendor applications are open. They have been open for a while. And, uh, yeah, if you want to apply, go to vendorapplications.cponycon.com and go and pick up and, uh, register yourself to vend at the convention and we hope to see you there. Ah, awesome, awesome. And talking about merch, you know that um, by October we're gonna get the My Little Pony movie, right? Yep. Uh, by the way, I I made a mistake. It's vendors. Ponycon, not vendor applications. Ah, vendors. Yes. Ponycon. That's much more easy to remember. Because it was staff application at Ponycon if you wanted to apply for staff. So it's just vendors. Ponycon. Ah, all right. But anywho, um, end of the year we're gonna get the My Little Pony movie, and with any movie we're gonna get toys, and yes. apparently. Um, with toys, we get some new characters being revealed to us. Oh, yes. And there's a new character out by the name of Birdo, who is a big giant pirate parrot. There's, there, were, there were a few interesting characters from there, especially that cat. Yeah. Like, when he came out, I was like, yeah, cats broke Kajita's wares if you have coin. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> There's, there's that. But Birdo here. Uh, Birdo is a big giant bird. I adequate him to Zangief from Street Fighter. And you know what? I can't wait to hear him talk. I hope he has a big giant Russian accent. Hey. <laughs> Pirates aren't Russian. That's what you know. Oh, yeah, you got a point. But anywho, um, I can't wait to see Birdo up on stage. Probably he could be a background character. I don't know. Big bird. Not a background character. It's not something you can't miss. Well, you'll be surprised by how well they hid him. <laughs> he could be—he could be the new West Waldo. See, where's Birdo? <laughs> see, you just see that shadow just flash right over the screen. Oh, there he is. Uh, yeah, Off yeah. screen, but you know it's him. Yeah, he's big. Uh, but anywho, uh, that's the news for this week. But there's like a freaking air raid alarm in the back when he comes through. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's the news for this week, but we still have Dan here. So, Dan, what else are we missing about the Seaponi Con? Like, what else should we know? Up to now, what we've showed is what you need to know. There is a lot of information you can get from our website. And uh, if you have any questions, just send them to me, contact at seaponycon.com or email me directly at daniel at seaponycon.com. We've got a lot of things lined up that are going to come out over the next few weeks. And um, one of the th- Things that we are going to start announcing after we get all this uh, application stuff all settled. We have community guests coming as well. Ooh, so Mel Mills is one of them. Yes, he's the first one to be announced, and there are more that have already confirmed that will be announced soon. Ooh, I can't wait. I hope I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be. <laughs> oh yeah! See, I'm going to be there. <laughs> well, I'm going to be there. Doesn't mean I'll be a. Uh, community guests. I wish I was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the community guests are people whom you most likely will be familiar with. In fact, um, oh man, I'm trying not to leak their names now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in anticipation, we've got musicians who are going to be performing for our dance party called Thunderstorm, and we're going to have some uh, notable PMB makers from the region as well. I think I know a few of them. Uh huh. Yep, you are on the right track. Yeah. Well, if you want to know, check out the MBS shows podcast to see who we've talked to. Mm-hmm. There might be clues in there. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm uh, interviewed a bunch of people, and I get a general idea on 
who some of the PMV makers are. So yeah, mm. the PMV makers are a very interesting community, and uh, it's really interesting to see how some of them have gone to create. I create stuff that has made it to all corners of the world, and you know, a lot of people, some people don't know that they're actually a lot of them are from this part of the world. So we want to bring them up and show show off who they are. True, 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 true. So well, there's community guests. And, well, I don't know what to say anymore because I am hyped. I can't wait to go there because I can't wait to see the people. I can't wait to see the environment. I can't yes, just... Yes, and Norman, in short, you're due for a convention. True. It's, it's, I think it's all of us. We just feel we're due for another round, you know? Yeah, true. I mean, uh, the last pan- sorry, the last convention I went to was uh, the Friendship Express. I totally skipped uh, Comic Fiesta, so... Project Steve Ponycon is going to be my first convention. I think my first and only convention for this year. You're not going for CF this year if it happens? I don't know. It's <laughs> from what I heard of last year's CF, it was... Oh, rare. okay, fine. Fair enough. Yeah. CF was fun, but I mean, you know, it's... It was tight. It's fun. No, it's, yes, and that is one of the things that people have always said about places like Bronicon. Like, oh, Bronicon's too tight. Bronicon's got too many people. And... um yeah, uh, having a lot of having too many people can be a bit of a drawback for a convention, and we totally understand that. True. Oh well, um, that's future us problem, not us problem now. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, then, is there anything else? Since I mentioned that we're four and a half months uh. Uh, away from the con, it's quite it's getting close. But also, right now, especially for Malaysians, uh, the Mata Fair is has just passed. It was last weekend, mm-hmm. but. Some of the airlines are still holding their sales. So, if your budget was to was just about three hundred ringgit to four hundred ringgit, it's about time to book. It's still you still have a bit of hope left. I just said earlier, Malaysia Airlines is flying return to Bangkok for just three hundred ringgit. It's a uh, it's a very good deal. In fact, because me and some of the team members, uh, we booked our tickets far in advance because we of course we need we need to ensure that we're going to be there and nothing gets in the way. So therefore, we made. We took every precaution to ensure that our tickets were booked far in advance and locked in completely. We actually look at this and we're like, darn, we overpaid. Yeah, true. But still, it's the confirmation thing. Like, for me and the general uh, audience, we're waiting for a good fair price. Like, I had a group of friends on the Facebook chat groups. We were planning to book a flight. So, we didn't really know when to book it. We didn't really know when because uh we had one offer that was a good price but suddenly the price very went up and then we got another one and in the end uh we all book a fare by Melindo Airs which a pretty good amount like I think it's very, very around good. the 300 ringgit range so yeah um that's for to and fro so it's not bad it's not bad I mean if you have a moment we can talk a bit about travel Oh, traveling. So, besides the airplane and boats and cars. I mean, it's, it's basically the, the airplane because that's the main bit. It's, uh, in, we, we actually have an editorial on, uh, Equestra Daily called The Six Elements of Attending a Convention. And just because it's, uh, by us, by Project C Ponycon, it doesn't mean that you cannot extrapolate this to other events. You can apply all six of these main elements to any convention in the world and it would be r- roughly relevant still. The idea is that when it comes to airfare, uh, booking in advance is always a good thing because of the security of a ticket. Um, yeah, sometimes cheaper tickets come out later, but think about what would happen if the cheap tickets, if the plane so- sells out very early. Mm-hmm. Flights can be sold out. And if, and if any of you listening have ever been on a plane, you'll notice virtually the whole plane is full. There's no empty seats. Sometimes, depending on the empty location. The are very rare, very, very rare. Unless you fly to some completely unknown location. True, true. But well, sometimes, like, uh, I do understand then, um, going to book a flight is important. And yes, if you book a flight early to a certain location, very early, you might get a good price or not. But in the end, you are going. So, yep. it's a catch 22 right about now. Do I go now and spend a bit more or less? Or do I book for the future where I know I will get a good price? You don't know if you'll get a good price, that's the thing. It's it's very unpredictable, but if you're willing to wait and perhaps see if you could get a better price, yeah, by all means, go ahead. Hmm. Because um, two, 300 is not the best price. The price has dropped to 250 before. It dropped to very, very low prices before. 
Mm, true, but at the same time, that's a very very rare moment. Uh, it's not just rare. It's um, it's the, the it it can pop up quite frequently, but. You gotta make sure you're ready when it happens. If you have a credit card, yeah, that's easy. But if you don't, then you know you've got to really make sure you've got cash on standby for these things. True, true. Uh, but still, there's hidden charges in. No, that, that's flight. Yes, that's flight. That's hidden charges. For, for and um, just uh, carrying forward a bit of a public service announcement here for all of you who've booked from Malindo from Malaysia. Like uh, Norman, your group will be affected by this. Malindo has moved permanently its operations from KLIA two to KLIA main terminal. Ah, all right. So, uh, starting from, it started already this month. So even my trip to, uh, cause I'm flying Malindo next month to Thai PonyCon, it has been moved to KLIA main terminal. So don't go to the wrong terminal, guys. Wait, so you, you, for real? What do you mean? Like, every flight that Malindo has is going through KLIA 1? No. Um, some of them go through Subang, but I don't think the Bangkok ones go through Subang. Oh. They used to go through KLIA 2 and Subang. Now the KLIA 2 flights have moved to KLIA. Oh, huh. So main terminal, guys. Because I mean, they're, they're we're we're a weird country in terms that our airport terminals, we're the one of the only countries in the world that it's not free to move between the two airport terminals. So make sure you go to the right one. Yeah, the only reason why we're not free to move around from terminal one to terminal two is because we have two huge airports in between. Like one doesn't. Ex- there, there's no sky bridge or there's no uh, easy way to link no, both of them. Well, it's very easy to take the train, but the trouble is five ringgit. It's not free in that sense. True. You have to pay for it. Uh, other airports mostly do um, inter-terminal bus shuttles and things like that. If you're in Malaysia, just you know, bear in mind that you have to pay for it. It's not free, unfortunately. True. Ah, five bucks is no problem. But still, but still, what I what I really want to talk about when it comes to the traveling and stuff is when you go to a foreign country, be sure you have the proper amount of bucks. Like paper money, because some places they don't accept credit cards. So to have paper money on standby is a good thing to be ready. Excellent idea. That that is something that uh, we have to stress. Change your money early as well if you can. I mean, don't change all of it if you don't feel comfortable with the exchange rate. But make sure you're holding some of the current uh, five baht in this current uh, con- current situation. Uh, change some in your home country before you come over. Thai baht is a pretty popular currency, especially in Southeast Asia. You most likely can find it. True, true. And at the same time, food. Like, be sure to look for golden arches and whatnot, because those are the food that you know. But if you can't find any golden arches, be sure to, well, uh, see... Supermarkets. Yeah, supermarkets. Supermarkets are a great place for this, because... Food there is usually packable, and it's sometimes, you know, like a burrito or a, a, a veggie wrap or something like that. Yeah. It's convenient, it's easy, you can chuck in your bag, and then when you go to the convention or any event or anything for that matter, even like, you know, on the day that you're leaving, before you head to the airport, you can buy something the night before to make sure you have something ready to eat in the morning instead of running around, finding something to eat and being worried. True. Uh, but at the same time, too, I'm not talking about that. I mean, something to get yourself ready for the breakfast before and after because you will be staying at a hotel or budget hotel, wherever it is that you're going. Probably if you're lucky enough to a friend's place. So food and whatnot will be easier on you. But if you're staying at a motel, a capsule hotel or even a grand hotel, um, food will be hard to come by. Mm-hmm. That is That is a very, very good point as well. And um, coming back to flights before we move on to that, um, sometimes uh, one of the things that I've learned through, you know, being a flight spotter and a bargain hunter in, in terms of flights is that, um, and it's also one of the trade secrets, is that some people always ask, hey, Daniel, what's the site you use to book flights? I don't use one particular site. I use a variety of sites and the variety and list that I use changes as per the destination of the flight. It's not, the key to finding good flights is not a one size fits all. And Sometimes they say, I found it cheaper on another site. And a a lot of times there are either hidden fees or in the case of, in fact, Malindo, I don't mean anything against the company, but their ticketing system has glitched many times in the past. In fact, on some sites yesterday, Malindo air tickets were showing for as low as 50 ringgit. Wow. And it was a glitch. You couldn't purchase it. It was a complete glitch. So be 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 aware of this, and if you see a low price, make sure you uh, attempt to purchase the ticket. Don't have to purchase it. Attempt to purchase it. Go until the final screen where you're about to click make payment, and make sure that the number you see there is the same. Or 
take note of that number because that's the final amount you'll be paying. If you sometimes see your first amount and then you, you, and be careful, budget airlines are always trying to add things to your fare. Like, uh, once upon a time, Air Asia used to try to sneak in, uh, baggage into your ticket when, you know, you're just scrolling through the site, you'd forget to uncheck the box. It adds baggage to your ticket. Air Asia by default does not come with check-in baggage. Uh, true. So, suddenly you see your ticket price shoot up by 150 ringgit and you ask what the hell's going on. It's actually because there were charges that you have to make sure you read everything clearly. It's, not the usual terms and condition yada yada you use when you're installing iTunes. <laughs> uh, well, th- that's a good note too. If for people who are interested in buying tickets for the fair for the con, so yeah. Um, besides that, food, money, um, place to stay. I suggest uh, doing all of this at the same time when you're doing the doing the flight. We actually call it a day zero, which is the day before the event. This is the day when you actually get to survey what what's around you, learn about the place. And uh, this is a great time to look around the venue and understand where things are, important things. Uh, toilets, places to eat, the lifts, the stairs, emergency exits, blah, blah, blah. These are the things you need to uh, familiarize yourself with. So instead of burning precious convention time doing that, do it the day before if, if, if the venue is open, go to it. And if not, walk around outside, learn about where things are, think about where you're going to have lunch and stuff like that. All right, all right. Good tips. All of them are good tips. And uh, the rest of the six elements, in fact, the first element is airfare. The second element is uh, somewhere to stay, Mm -hmm. being able to stay somewhere in uh, Bangkok. Uh, Bangkok's got a huge variety of places to stay. And uh, as I mentioned in the last time I was on the MBS show, just check out all sorts of things and don't be turned off from a hotel because you see bed and breakfast or even just a bed or like you know as Norman mentioned a cafe hotel or a room you can get this for as low as 50 40 ringgit a night it's really cheap in Bangkok but of course don't let a hotel turn you off because why if you have friends who are going hey ask them hey want to share a hotel mm-hmm. let's go you know you can you can ha- you can split a room a few ways and and in fact it's even safer it's something we totally recommend because you know at least you have somebody you're staying with who can look out for you and you know if you all go out, you can at least have a second set of eyes to check out for transport and things like that. True, true. And talking about transport, um, I'm sure that Thailand has a lot of good transport system from their taxi to their buses to their trains and to their tuk-tuks. Here's the thing. Over the past 10 years, tuk-tuks have diminished severely. What? The reason being, tuk-tuks have become such a tourist attraction that I don't mean to be racist, but they're just for white people. Tuk-tuks have become the staple, um, you know tourist attraction transport they're no longer a very uh public method of transport anymore unfortunately uh they still do have some of them but uh we don't recommend because chances are you're gonna have to be able to speak thai to go with this and um and we don't really even need that uh level of transportation because there are new things that have been introduced in thailand first of all the new uh metro system the metro the lrt and the airport rail system if you land at Suvarnabhumi Airport, which um, unfortunately Malindo doesn't fly to, uh, Malaysia Airlines, Thai Airways, Bangkok Airways, uh, Philippine Airlines, and Garuda Indonesia, <laughs> this airport uh, has a railway station. And in fact, we just discovered that if you come out of the airport and turn left and walk in a straight line for a few kilometers, you reach the convention hall. <laughs> It's really that, it's, I, I, we didn't realize it was that close, in fact. It's just, it's just, literally, we're down the road from the airport. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Mm, all right. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, <laughs> but the, the thing is that the, the train station is, just runs parallel to that road. So get on the train, hop on the train, take the train all the way to Fetchaburi or Makassan, get off and you're pretty much close to the convention center already. Awesome, awesome. Those are good tips for our international travelers. Like, I'm sure they'll be landing at the Thai International Airport. Uh, no, do- most people would probably be landing at Don Muang because that's where the budget airlines land. Air Asia, Malindo, Cebu Pacific, um, and, uh, Jetstar, Scoot. Most of these airlines will land at, at Don Muang. Don Muang is a much smaller airport and you're gonna need to navigate around to it. And of course, if you're coming with friends, that is the best option because then get a taxi and split it. <clears throat> Thailand has both Uber and Grab. If you have, if not familiar with Grab, Grab is a Southeast Asian a, a competitor to Uber. 
and it works perfectly fine there. Uh. You can take anything from, you can take a simple car, or if you're traveling alone with just a backpack, they have Uber Moto, which is pretty much the modern tuk-tuk. You just ride pillion with the motorcyclist. <laughs> Alrighty then. So, th- that's a good tip. That's a good tip. And Grab Car has the equivalent with Grab Bikes. So, you know, <laughs> use both. <laughs> alright, alright. So, what else then? What else? Because uh, you mentioned we got the six things. So, we did yes, uh, um, we, we did uh, air. What else? what else? Yeah, we covered four things. Airfare, transit, mm-hmm. lodging. Uh, the food. Okay, yes. Just another note about food. We've talked a lot about food in this episode, True. actually. Uh, we understand that there are going to be among our attendees quite a number of people who are Muslims, who are going to, you know, need to eat halal food. Now, unfortunately, Bangkok is not like Indonesia or Brunei or Malaysia. The halal food is not as, you know, abundant as it is. But that doesn't mean that this doesn't exist. So that is one of the strong reasons why we are recommending supermarket food for those who need to eat halal so you know you can you know recce a supermarket a day before the con go there take a look buy what you need and have yourself ready for the convention you know just with all the food in hand in a sense from what i heard from my friend that traveled to thailand before um the way that they solve this problem is by buying a loaf of bread jam or tuna and made (laughs) uh, yeah made them themselves like yeah made made their own food Brilliant idea, Norman. In fact, yeah, that's something we totally recommend as well. Make sandwiches. But the problem is, like, you're in Thailand, you won't be eating the cuisines and whatnot. It's like, uh, I yeah. mean, the thing is that it's not, I mean, this roadside food is not halal certified and um, pork is quite abundant in Thailand, unfortunately. Yeah, from what I understand too. But it's the same, at the same time too, like, if you're daring and you can find halal food, be sure to check it out. Like, be sure to have some local cuisines, have some authentic Thailand tom yum. Like, that'll be an experience. Tom yum, green curry. Mm. Thailand has got amazing food. It's a gastronomic capital. True, 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 true. Well, uh, that's the food. And what are the other two then? Alright, the fifth one is admission because uh, the convention, a lot of people, those especially perhaps used to the Friendship Express, the first year was free, second year was seven ringgit, Yes, we are the most expensive convention in Southeast Asia. The ticket is a thousand Thai baht. Right now, we are having a discount where you can get your ticket for 900 Thai baht. Uh, hashtag friendship, friendship without borders. It's available at tickets.cponycon.com. Um, while stocks last, it's a limited sale. And, uh, we also have this guarantee with our admission because we know that people, not everyone has a credit card, debit card, bank account, Maybank for you or not. So our ticket price is a thousand Thai baht, and it will be a thousand Thai baht even if you buy it on the convention day itself. We're not going to have any, uh, you know, special price. Like, I mean, we do have a special price going on right now, but the basic ticket price is a thousand Thai baht, and it's the same at the convention. Uh, for that matter, the other tickets you see online, though, like the discounted ticket, the group booking ticket. Yes, we have group booking. If you come in a group of more than five. You can get a discount on your booking on our website. The tickets that include hotel stays, the tickets that include, uh, you know, extra perks, the tickets that include uh, priority seating and admission, all this will not be available at the door. Only uh, basic tickets at the door. <clears throat> yeah, and I do hope you guys understand that. Well, uh, those tickets are exclusive for the people who book them because online. They- we need to make allocations for these tickets. So unfortunately, they're not just available online. They also have a. They also will only be selling um, for a limited time. So a couple of weeks prior to the convention, you'll notice some tickets being removed from sale. It's because you know it's reached the time limit for those. The time limits for each individual ticket is available at tickets.cponycon.com. You can actually go there and take a look. Yep, yep. And I do hope you guys get good seatings because if I were to do a panel, I'm sure you guys would want to sit up front where you can see me talk. Or if yeah. you guys want to avoid the seating, you can sit way back. <laughs> Don't do that when I have an activity at the moment. I say, I need a volunteer. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> so what's the last one then? The last one is the convention experience. This thing is... um. A must because getting to the convention itself, because I've, I've heard of people who actually go for events and don't go in because, you know, they just want to be outside. And it happens because, you know, 
sometimes the event is too expensive and we completely understand that. But with us, <clears throat> we made the ticket as affordable as we could. We can't go lower than that. And um, even if you've got all your savings all lined up for everything, even according to our savings chart, something that is not ex- actually in our savings chart is the experience of the convention. And this is something you have to budget for yourself because nobody knows what you want to do at a convention. It is The convention is really up to you if you want to spend the whole day in the vendor hall shopping. Yeah, why not? If you want to spend the whole day at panels, sure. And something completely new to Asia is having a VA at a pony convention. So we want to, we have some bad news to break to people who have a misunderstanding about this. No, autographs are not free. Unfortunately, autographs are not free with VAs. And this is not because we want to put a paywall on this. This is agreed upon in a contractual agreement with the agency that the VA comes from. So at most conventions like BronyCon and Buck and I think, um, I'm, maybe not Buck, I don't really know Buck that well, but I know um, TrotCon, EFNW and all this, the classic price for a VA hovers around 20 US dollars per autograph and per photo. Some people, they want autograph and photo, it's 40 dollars, US dollars we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. And you know, we looked at it and said, wow, 20 US dollars is about, you know, it's 800 to 855 baht. That's just almost like buying another ticket to the convention in itself. And we negotiated with uh, Andrew Lippmann's agency and we said, okay, come, we need to pass savings down to the people who come to this convention. They are the people who are the most important because that's the people we're doing this convention for. And uh, most conventions would usually take a cut of this because, you know, some revenue being generated from the autographs, we decided it was a painful decision to make because, you know, we also need operational costs to be covered. But we said, we are willing to sign off all profits from Andrew Lipman. We're not making any money off her through autographs and photos. And we lowered that price to 600 to 5 baht. And, well, that's something rare for Con to do because uh, besides getting money from the vendors and, and attendees, attendees um, you some do have... Uh, sponsors. Yeah, some do have sponsors and uh, they get their money from, well, little things like the VA signing. And I'm sure that some other conventions thought that, hey, uh, we could get a lot of bang for our buck if we do this. I mean, it's not the convention's ideas. These are, these are things that were proposed by generally by the VAs and their agencies because it's standard, it's standard practice with getting these people. And one thing I really, really want to talk about here, and I really want to make clear is that greed doesn't play a role in this. We as a convention, we need money to run. I mean, you can't really say we're being greedy. We're not making any profit off this. But on the same note, you can't, can't say that Andrew Lipman or her agency is being greedy. Remember that when she is here, when she goes to conventions, when any VA goes to a convention to make an appearance, to to speak, to make funny voices for everyone, that's their job. That's a part of what they do. And everything that they do comes at a cost. True, true. Unless they because, go there by themselves. Even then, they will have to pay for their flight ticket and things like that. It's completely not free. There are things that need to be settled. True, true. But if they go to set location by themselves for a vacation... Yeah, um, they're paying it for, out of their own money as a vacation yeah, cost. It's just someone else paying. There's just it's just someone else who's paying the bill because there's always going to be a bill. And of course, being a convention, we wanted to bring her here. We had to put most of it. We're not saying we want to pass the blame or anything like that. It's oh, not no, that no. we're not passing the blame at all. We're trying to elaborate that you know this is one of the things that makes Project C PonyCon beautiful. We want to make it accessible. It is a commitment that we strive so hard for. So people have come and said, why are you being so greedy with this or things like that? We're not. We want to, we just want to make this convention affordable, accessible for every pony, especially those who unfortunately due to economic, uh, socioeconomic, family or whatever situations may never be able to experience a Western pony convention in their lifetime. I understand that feeling too, because besides going to a Western Brony convention, I really want to go to a Comic-Con. And the closest I can get is... Shah Alam. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we have a Comic-Con, by, by the way. We do. Yeah, we do. And huh. it's spelled with a K. Oh, no. But honestly, like the, the New lo- York... The local looks the same. Except it's a Wayan Kulit in the yellow box. Oh, uh, yeah, well, but anyway, like, I, I want to attend an American Comic Con, like Comic Con San Diego, where all the good stuff are there. But what I get to attend is Comic Fiesta, and, yeah. That's but, not really. <laughs> 
But that's besides the point. And for the Brony experience, uh, Project C Ponycon is the closest that I may get to meet a VA besides on Skype because being in person and being on Skype is totally two different things. So two completely different things because on Skype, you don't know if your connection's good. <laughs> yeah, we've experienced that with uh, the French Express Hello, too. Welcome to your Skype. Oh, just in service. After the please record a message. Afterwards, your message will be played back to you. Ding! Oh, you you remember is that line well? <laughs> I've heard it too many times. It's uh, not my fault. Um, I didn't even want to memorize it. It's just stuck in my head like a bad song. Uh, but that's besides the point. But that's besides the point. Uh, so the convention experience is a personal experience, and I do recommend you going in. Um, if not for the VAs, it's for the vendors. If not for the vendors, the panelists. I'm sure there's a few panelists that you might enjoy, like that one MBS show panel. I'm sure they're pretty good guys. Mm-hmm. If you if you're there, remember, the convention experience is what we're bringing. So, being around friends and just you see the magic of BronyCon that we felt that when we were there, it was unlike un- no other convention we've ever been to because. When we went, when me and Charlie and a few others went to BronyCon, we did it as a study trip. We wanted to learn how it was done there. And even on day zero, before the convention even started, Baltimore became pretty much Equestria on Earth. Everyone was friends. You can just walk around and a brony will be anywhere. You t- you walk, you just spin 360, you'll see at least a 10, 15 bronies all over the place. People were wearing brony shirts left, right, and center, and the town was decorated because the Baltimore Convention Center has banners and buntings and pennants all saying BronyCon, welcome to BronyCon. The feeling was so amazing. And some people have asked, are we bringing this feeling over to uh, Project C PonyCon, perhaps to the out-of-home collateral and banner advertising? We said, no, unfortunately, that is not on our list because all that we have in terms of budget go towards the convention experience inside the convention and uh coming back to the point, we really felt that experience was so beautiful that we, you just be able to walk up to anybody, say hi, and give them a bro hoof. We want that experience here. We want to bring that. That is the most magical part of a convention, even more than the panels, even more than uh, the vendors. I would say that is the most magical part. True that, true that. And I hope you guys get to experience it too. On that note, uh, we were also asked, hey, uh, our, our, is Project C Ponycon live streaming the convention to those who cannot make it? The answer we've decided is most likely no. Because the reason is, uh, we don't, we don't mean that, we don't mean this in any bad way, but we say those who are at the convention, we prioritize the experience for them. And every resource that we have goes towards making it memorable for those who are there. Anything and anything like um, a live stream, especially, you know, if people are just sitting at home or if, you know, people decide to sit at home rather than be at the convention, live streaming it is, first of all, going to be unfair to everyone who paid for a ticket to be at this convention. And two, it's just going to diminish, diminish the experience for hmm. the people who are live streaming. You're going to watch it and all that effort that not just us, but perhaps our panelists, our musicians, and our team members put in, the blood, sweat, and tears we put in, a screen cannot do that justice. And it's going to be a diminished experience. Oh, true. If you want a computer, there's Hakon. Exactly. Hakon was fantastic. It was so much fun. And uh, yeah, wait for the next Hakon. That's the convention all about live streaming. You're going to love it there anyway. And I mean... I watched BronyCon at home before when Everfree Network used to broadcast it from Baltimore and also the Meadowlands Convention Center in uh, Secaucus, New Jersey. That was quite interesting. But then again, you see, for me, I don't know about anyone else, when I watched that, the only thing I felt was I wish I was there. So for those of you who think that way, Project C PonyCon is the time to stop dreaming and let the dream come true. Indeed, indeed. Because 1920 to August, perfect weekend. Flight prices are going still affordable now. So, hey, four and a half months, you've still got time. It's not too late. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, anyway, thank you, Dan, for, well, promoting the con because you got me excited. I, I can't wait to go there. No problem, man. I'm sorry if I was a bit long-winded. Ah, no, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. And you know what? I can't wait to apply panels because I got a few ideas. Like, I want to do several 
panels, like the yeah, NBA show like panel. Said, you're not limited to one panel. You can yeah. apply for more than one. And this is a big uh, thing. This is something we recommend because even at big cons like BronyCon, applying for one panel, if you're really, really interested in doing panels or talking about things, do more than one application because unfortunately... It says on its application, we're not going to guarantee you're going to get it. You're not guaranteed to get the panel you want to do. It also, it all depends on whether we can fit it into the schedule, how well we can accommodate it, and how relevant it is to ponies. So non-pony related panels will not be given the priority that a pony related panel is. That's one because, hey, it's a pony convention. True. But if you have an idea, don't be afraid to submit multiple entries. Just don't spam it. True that, true that. And you know what? If it's, Fresh and new, do it. If you think you're really unique, do it. Because I know the MBS show's panel is not fresh and it's not new. <laughs> well, we can make something new. Yeah, I got ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, anywho, uh, let's move on to the next topic. And next topic is, what has been entertaining us this week? So, uh, for me personally, I've been playing a lot of Tabletop Simulator. And... Uh-huh. Tabletop Simulator is a really interesting and fun game where you can play... Simulator is Goat Simulator meets Gmod. <laughs> Not really, because uh, Goat Simulator is a really strange game. While Why Gmod... is the goat then? <laughs> Gmod is another beast to itself. But uh, Tabletop Simulator, what it does is it simulates board games from your standard Monopoly to your rather rare games that you don't get to play that often because people don't know the rules. Um, recently, I played a game called Red Dragon Inn and whew, that was highly entertaining. Really, really entertaining. I would like to try it, you know, I mean, if I had the time. Yeah, who knows? Uh, probably somebody would have that at um, Project C PonyCon and they can yeah. set up a table there. I, I'm sure you guys have allocated... Why would you set up a table when you can spawn a 2,000 of them in the game? Well, <laughs> <I'm kidding>. <laughs> you can't play it at C PonyCon. <laughs> but no, that's besides the point. But that's besides the point. I've been playing a lot of games with the dock and yeah, uh, it was really entertaining. It was really, really fun. Yeah, so, the dock has been telling me about the game as well. And how, uh, you know, it's taken a lot of people, especially his uh, board game enthusiast friends by Storm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, you have two board game enthusiasts, and yeah, the game's going to have a lot of fun. You're oh, going to yeah. discover a lot of new things. So, yeah, this has been entertaining me. And uh, the other one is the Power Ranger uh-huh. movie. I've, yes. I've watched that, and it's really cool. Uh, I don't know how to say this. Like, I have a friend who said that he was a fan of the show, but he didn't like it. But I have another guy who was a fan of the show and he likes it. So I don't know if I should recommend this or not. Like, I say this. If you are a Ranger fan, I say go watch it with an open mind. Don't think about what the Rangers have been up to all this time. Probably, probably. (laughs) And Dan, what about you, my friend? What has been entertaining you this week? This is quite interesting because um, for the longest time since I was working on some media stuff, I didn't listen to much music because, well, my ears get tired of having headphones mm. on 12 hours a day, having politicians screaming in my ears from <laughs> video recordings mm-hmm. thanks to my job line. But recently, I got an offer to reactivate my Google Music account and they were giving me four months of premium for free. Oh, I was right. like, all right. Uh, now I can listen to albums that I haven't bought. <laughs> you know, it's, like, it's like Apple Music Pro, uh, Apple Music subscription just uh, by Google. And then mm-hmm. Because they allow you to put your own music in it. Yeah. So uh, I went straight for the new MLP albums that came out a while back, like Pinkie Pie's Party Playlist and, uh, you know, the Heartwarming album as well. I've, I've listened to most of them. But I've been, you know, season one of MLP has such a big place in my heart that, um, you know, being able to go back and listen to songs that I've um, heard before but just redone in such a magnificent way It just made me feel that nostalgia attack, and I really, really liked that. Yeah, like, you you should try and listen to the fourth album, uh, Digipon Tree Presents My Little Pony. Yeah, I've listened to some of that. I tried that out as well. It's an interesting album. But then again, because of season one, my ringtone is... Oh, no, put it out, put it out. (laughs) (laughs) I I just fell in love with that again. I mean, it just reminded me of why I watch Pony. 
Yeah, the 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 season one songs are good. Like I, I'm not going to even debate on which season has the better songs because all of Daniel Ingram's works are awesome. And speaking of Daniel Ingram's works, another thing that intrigued me just a couple of weeks ago, actually, rather, but you know, because it's still relevant, I usually save one episode from a season of MLP for a rainy day for when I'm feeling bad or I need something to cheer me up. And uh, in season five, I actually saved the main. The main event. The main attraction. The, uh, yeah, the main attraction, the one with Countess Colatura. Mm-hmm. And I realized I did, I, I chose the right episode to save because recently I had, uh, my, I had to upgrade my phone for work stuff and also for, uh, convention communications and stuff. So I purchased a phone that, uh, you know, one of the features I noticed it came with was Dolby Atmos technology. And I, li- I watched that episode, uh, the main attraction for the first time. In Dolby Atmos. It was the first video I watched in Dolby Atmos. And Danny, listening to that song, um, you know, The Magic Inside, I'm Just a Pony, The Spectacle, and uh, The Equestria of My Home in Dolby Atmos, I was like, oh my god, I really saved the right episode. <laughs> nice, nice. I mean, a lot of people say, hey, it's just a phone. How can a phone do Dolby Atmos? I'm like, you'll be surprised. Yeah, like two cameras you on the phone. Surprised. <laughs> no, they have three cameras. The front camera comes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in a phone ad once. <laughs> yeah, I remember that one. I, I, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the new iPhone. <laughs> no, I mean, that phone also had two cameras. <laughs> I know. And my, my friend and brother-in-law has it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's besides the point. But that's besides the point. Anyway... If you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mbsshow@gmail.com. You can also catch us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at mbsshow. As for me, I am at Norman Sanzo. I tweet about toys, food, and whatever tickles my fancy. Dan, where can the good people find you? Anyone who wants to find me, you don't necessarily have to be a good person. If you have any questions or anything you want to ask, I, my life's an open book. Get me on... Twitter, I'm at Saint Pinky. I speak when I'm spoken to. Uh, you can get me on Discord, Saint Pinky hash two four zero nine. You can email me at Daniel at cponycon.com if you have any questions about the convention, or just tweet the convention itself at cponycon on Twitter, or go to facebook.com slash cponycon. Follow the convention on Instagram on uh, instagram.com slash cponycon. And uh, you know we've got plenty of updates coming up, so stay tuned to that. Uh, subscribe to our convention updates at youtube.cponycon.com. We are going to be talking a lot more about our panels and stuff very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. And, uh, generally, yeah, I am available when I'm available, so yes. Awesome, awesome. And also please subscribe and read us on iTunes, YouTube, and Stitcher Radio. And also like our Facebook page. If you want to come find me, ask me any questions. The next time uh, Project C PonyCon is going to be having a panel is at Thai PonyCon. 8th of April in Bangkok, Thailand at the Bangkok Art and Culture Center. So if you are in the region, you're in Thailand and hearing this, I will see you there. Awesome, awesome. And also on PonyForLife.com. And links will be in the show notes. Also, if you guys don't mind, we have a new show out. It's called the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast, available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. And well, what we do there is basically we review the My Little Pony episodes, comics, movies, and we also do a little bit extra, like talk about other things like Batman the Killing Joke, discuss about movies that we saw, or uh, one of my favorite things that might happen is talk about Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. Ah. That's going to be fun. Hey, why don't you review the con once it's, ha- once it's happened? Probably, I, I can do that. <laughs> Maybe that sounds fun. Yeah, I would like to hear you know feedback after it happens <laughs> and stuff like that. Oh wow, that, that'll be fun to see. That'll be fun to see. Anyway, if you guys would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com dot com slash the MBS show. So what we do here is well, we have this thing called the awesome tip jar, where for a dollar you get a thanks at the end of the episode and also you get exclusive content that is up on the um, page like for one uh, there's going to be a deleted episode for uh, 2016 it's one of the oh, last episode boy. that yeah it's, it's very um, strange so yeah you got that and if you have a topic for us to 
talk about, um, got a topic to talk about, a discussion that you want us to discuss, um, it's also there. Um, five bucks will get you that. So, if you want to, um, it's all on Patreon. Um, and talking about Patreons and saying thank you, I would like to thank Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, and Dracotorius, Starstream, and Master of Lag. Thank you for the support, guys. And uh, be sure to stick around because your Patreon thingy will be fulfilled soon enough. So anyway... For a moment, I thought you said uh, Master, thank Master of Lag for... Uh, support, what you call it, supporting you guys. I'm like, Master of, Master of Light does your tech support. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> but, but anyway. My internet connection slow. Anything else? <laughs> oh, wow. My ping speed is 200, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know, no comment there. But anyway, uh, I have been Norman Sanzo. I've been Daniel Anthony. <laughs> we'll guys catch you next week for another amazing episode of the MBS show. Yes. See ya. And I'll see you in Bangkok.